All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to more Black Desert. My name is John, and today we are doing our August edition of our window shopping series. If you don't know what that is, basically every month we look at the market and show you the trends of notable items in the game. And whether you are a new player or a console player, I want to talk about items that I think might be good into your progression. And so that's where the notable items come in. And yeah, just show you the comparison between last month to this month. And if they added or changed any item prices, we'll talk about that as well if, um, during that. So yeah. If you didn't check out the July edition, you could check that out on the channel somewhere or I'll leave it in the description if I remember. And so the first thing we want to uh, cover is the Deborah prices. Now, as you guys know, before it used to be, I think, 60 or 70 billion silver. That was the hard cap. And they raised the cap up to 99 billion and suddenly everyone is selling them why because you get more money so that is one of the major updates where people are just actually just selling dabarekas now uh aside from the earrings which are still very new to the game i don't think we're going to be seeing any tets uh for a while and even if you are new and you're like getting to the gear score where dabarekas are in your range um, I would definitely go for the necklace first, because if you were to look at, uh, let's say an ogre or like, uh, let's see, what do I have? So let's say you have a pen ogre right now. That's 35 AP. And your next upgrade is obviously the Bereka. That's five AP for 300 billion. Obviously people aren't going to be selling it until it hard maxes. And even what, even then when it's hard max, I don't think people will be selling it for a while just because it is still a very rare item. Um, whereas if you are looking at a belt from 300 mil at the hard cap, you're going up 4 AP and 3 AP if you already have a Tungrad. So it is technically less value if you are going for a belt. And I would definitely go for a necklace first because that's just more stats for the same amount of silver. And then Debereka earrings are just straight up different. And I don't think these are bad. I just think this is like far later in your progression cycle. But anyway, this is all end game stuff. Let's talk about the notable items for, I guess, everyone who is in the mid tier range progressing into the end game. So I'll answer this question once again. I do it every month. So if you are curious to know for main hands, there are three weapons and people, especially the new players, always ask me, is it better to get an off in? versus Azarka, and when do I transition into Black Star? So I think for 99% of people, just getting the Zarka over the often is significantly better because if you look at it, the difference in stats, let's take a pen, for example. Note how it's 182 accuracy and 126 to 128, basically 127 AP. And this one, the Zarka, is 122 to 126 basically 124 or 200 accuracy so you're losing effectively roughly about 3 ap and i think the trade-off for accuracy is kind of a lot to the point where if you are let me, how do i describe this if you are getting to 261 ap with the zarka then it's better to use the Zarka all the way until you convert to Black Star. And if you are within like the 250 to 261 range, that is when technically often is uh, slightly better. But as the time goes on, it just makes often that much worse because it's significantly easier to get Zarkas these days. And let's see how much it is. 6.3 billion. We'll just say 6 billion for the sake of easy numbers and this one is kind of the same so i value accuracy a little bit more especially if you are into pvp and so we'll talk about that later when we get into accessories like the accuracy trade-off versus ap but i think just for 99 percent of people no matter what class you play i think the zarka is just straight up better and uh long term it is also better 
And so the second question is, when do I convert into Black Star? Now, if you are strictly a pve -er and that's all you do, like grinding, that's when I think you should start saving it. Once you have a pen at like Capris 4, and you're probably wondering, okay, so I just spent six billion and probably another bill and a half on Capris, like Capris 4 or something, I don't know. Or even just a pen with no Capris in it. Um, what you're looking at is a Tet Black Star. Now, this Tet Black Star is the equivalent of a Pen Zarka. And the difference is if you look at the all species and the extra AP against monsters, so it's like 17 and 32, right? So this one, it gives more species, but a lot less against monsters. So overall, if you were to look at the Tet Black Star, the overall net positive in terms of PVE uh, effectiveness is a lot higher. But it is also probably double the cost, in my opinion. So when you get to the point where you're looking at plus 15, maybe plus 20 uh, monster AP on your sheet. So the way you would check this is you look at your stats right here and make sure to be full buffed when you are checking this. So look at your AP and everything combined. And if you have Googled a sheet where it's like the monster caps, I have that video of that as well on the channel. I'll definitely leave that in the description. If you look at the uh, total AP that you have while you're full buffed and everything, and you're looking to grind into certain spots, if that number puts you into the range of a new grind spot you want to go, uh, then it's worth it. So when is it the right time? I can only give you the advice of when is the cheapest upgrade for the least amount of silver for you. So like when you already have like full pen armors and everything, and the next upgrade is probably like 15 or 16 billion for you. That's probably when I would start looking to upgrade. And that's just the best advice I can give you guys. Try to make smart decisions. And let's look at the awakening weapons. So they're all roughly the same price for hard maximums and minimums. So it doesn't really matter what I pick. Now... Dandy is probably the entry level awakening weapon that everyone has, right? 7 billion, 6 billion, roughly the same thing. Now, here's the thing. One thing that I would recommend to you guys is if you have a dandelion, I would rather capris it up to like halfway or something and get some accuracy stats on the side. Because right now, if you look at it, look at my pen black star, it has 12 accuracy. But a pen dandy has zero. So the way you get accuracy onto your pen dandelion is by putting Capris into it. So how much does that cost? And even if you're looking at black stars, a Tet black star does not have any. And 145 billion or more is actually a lot for everyone, myself included. So you're probably like, should I go God Eye? Because that gives one accuracy or three. In my opinion, going for a God Eye weapon is kind of like a new player bait. Now, if you are in the range of actually buying a Tet Black Star, and it's like, I don't know, 15 billion, right? And you look at this and you're like, okay, so I could buy a duo and it gives more stats and an extra accuracy. One accuracy doesn't actually mean that much, by the way, but it adds up later on. So I think being able to buy up to a duo or, uh, I don't know. Actually, I would say go duo. And the few extra billion for the stats you get on the side. So if you look at a base, a uh, god eye, that's the equivalent of a Tet Black Star. And so spending three billion more from a base to duo, or three or four billion for the extra three AP, that's a good deal. But just know that when you get your pen Black Star eventually, you're going to be losing money by selling it back. So that's the trade-off. You're getting temporary stats. And um, what I've seen people do is cron duo to try. I wouldn't really recommend croning or really enhancing try to tet at all. Just because like the rates and people have done the math and statistically it's not really worth it. If you get lucky, obviously it's good, but 
for a majority of players um it's not really worth the value because once you get taxed on this you're losing like 10 billion or actually no probably like 9 billion if you sell it for 60 which is kind of hard actually i don't know you could sell for 60 but just know you're losing like almost 10 billion silver on that tax and um so yeah if you can get it to try i think that's where the hard stopping point is and then you just keep try until you can get either a pen god eye or a pen black star same thing and um that's my thoughts on the god eye and black star and if you're planning on enhancing it yourself realistically the most effective way is saving your tet slamming your slamming it to 10 pen when you have enough cron stones because it, it is a higher enhanced chance it does cost more crons but like it just doesn't feel as bad so and monetarily if you do the math of it on whatever stack you're using chances are it's going to add up to uh being cheaper for effectiveness from going tet to pen black star than god eye also also it's all pretty easy to get a tet black star these days and if you put an order at minimum for basically any class you can get it within 24 hours at least on the na server so that's my opinion uh as a new New player to like mid tier player, just get a dandy to pen, capris it to like four or something, and then transition into black star when you well, that's your next cheapest option. So, next thing we want to talk about is, of course, sub weapons. This one is a little bit tricky to do because uh, there are a lot more choices, and especially if you're playing different classes, sometimes you have an accuracy offhand, you have an evasion offhand, you have your PvP and PvE option as well. So ask yourself what you do in this game. Do you PvE? Do you PvP? Do you do everything? Um, and then pick the one that works for you. So as an entry level, I would recommend Kudum to most people because the Kudum allows you to grind, you know, significantly faster. You do more damage, meaning you make more money an hour, and that's obviously good. And then when you do PvP, it really depends on what classes you do. Like, if you are a DR class or damage reduction, chances are you're going to be doing or using a Nuver when you're PvPing. And if you are, like, an evasion class, um, then obviously you'd be using an evasion offhand or something. And I do think that some people actually do use Black Stars for PvP, but that's one of those weird endgame things where, like, it, it doesn't really matter. And once again, um... It's better to get your Kudum to pen and just Capris it over getting a Tet Black Star. The amount of stats you get over here is... It's not really that noticeable. Obviously, it is more, but it's not like a significant change compared to Main Hands and Awakening. So, also, my stance stays the same as for Black Stars and God Eyes, even for the main hand or the offhand weapon as well. So, as we talked about for the Awakenings, my stance is basically the same thing. All right. Um, next, let's talk about the armors. I'm going to try to speed through this one because a lot of this is very repetitive. So... Your ultimate goal is to get the Labresca Helm, Fallen God, and the Dan's Gloves, or the Dawn Gloves. Now, when you get your thing from either your end of the reward season, or you're just making the helmet in general, uh, Griffin is slightly better than Gaia, because 5% resistances is technically worth more than 100%, or not 100%, 100 extra HP, uh, just because at late game pvp uh we all know that whoever gets cc'd first generally loses the fight so that five percent to not get cc'd is worth more than 100 hp in my opinion but regardless that is very little difference when it comes down to like large scale or just pvp in general but that's just my opinion if you are in the stage of just getting one i think griffin is better your ultimate goal is to get a Labresca, and that gives both. So, yeah, that's good. Um, I'll talk about this one time, because for this, uh, Labresca, Fallen God, and Dawn Gloves, the, my stance on it stays the same. So, if you have your P 
piece that you want to upgrade, like one of the these three, you use the exact same stats. And I personally have made all of mine to Tet, like they have my name on it, and I've made it to Tet every single time. So here's what I did. If you have a bunch of extra 100 stacks, you could just start at 100 for base to uh, pry. But if not, and you're strict on what stacks you use, I believe that 80 and up is the recommended from base to pry. And then you add like 30 to 40 per tier up until try. So 80 plus for base to try. Try to duo, I would probably start at like a 120 and then go to a 150 or 160, assuming they keep failing. And then duo to try, you start at like 160 and go up to 200. And then from try to tet, you literally just use the highest stack you have because these items are very expensive and they are worth more than pen black stars. So it's very difficult to get. And so I think it's worth using the highest stack you have. Uh, keep in mind that when I say the highest stack you have, chances are most people do not have multiple 300 stacks just sitting around. Some people do, but your average player is not going to have multiple 300s and if you do have it 300 plus i would save that for like a high tier pen accessory or something so for me personally i went and hit try to tet on 245s for every single one of them uh, i think i went a little bit higher on the dawn gloves just because i tilted but anyway either way it's done i don't have to think about it anymore so that's my opinion for all three pieces and that's what stacks i would use when we come to the armors, if you are a new player, uh, you have two choices, the Red Nose and Dim Tree. I would go with the Red Nose because it is cheaper to Capris all the way to 10, and your ultimate goal is to get the Fallen God armor. Uh, Black Star armors for all categories are, are Meme and Beginner Bait. Uh, the reasoning why I think Black Star armors are Bait is because back when they came out with these items, uh, Capris were not sitting on the market. They had hundreds of thousands of orders on it. So being able to get a pen black star, uh, the armor that is, was the cheapest way to get your fallen god armor without having to go through the Capris route. So back in the day, people did that and it was fine. If your server has Capris stones sitting on the market, just buy the Capris. It's basically the same thing, if not a little bit cheaper. And that's what I would do. So. Also, if you plan on using it, just don't because you're going to eventually sell it back to the market and it's just straight up not worth it. And like, look, getting a Tet is basically the equivalent of getting a Tet on the armor. And look at the price difference. 150 billion versus 8 billion. And obviously that's not like a one to one comparison. But like if I were to compare a Tet Black Star to a pen armor with Capris 10, it is a lot more like this is so easy to get you just buy it but anyway i would go with the red nose route because uh, it is cheaper to capris but it also depends keep in mind just look at the price of it and then compare it to how much it costs from capris uh zero to ten so this is something you're gonna have to do a little bit of math on like if the dim tree is seven billion and the red nose is eleven billion Make sure to do the math on how much Capra stones cost, and it might actually be cheaper to do it. But assuming they were the same price, then the Red Nose is always better. Or if you just go the route of straight up just buying the Fallen God armor at Pry and then slamming it yourself. Once again, same concept I just explained, and it's good to go. Okay, so there, here's where things change. Um, I do believe that... Liebers and Begs Gloves are... Okay, maybe not. The price changed a little bit. So, you know the whole general rule of should I go Evasion versus should I go DR? If you have to ask, you probably just go DR. So, the real answer to that one is know what class you play. And for me, personally, I would go to DR route because I'm a Dark Knight. How do you check? Uh, does your class have a lot of evasion passives on the side? And if you don't know how to check and you're wondering, basically you look at your class and you see these passives at the bottom. Do these passives include evasion at all? If it does, then you are an evasion character. 
if it doesn't you're most likely a dr character so that's just a very general baseline and um some might be a little bit different like strikers can go hybrids and i don't know it's like if you have any questions i'm happy to point you in the right direction so just ask but libras are evasion builds uh bags is dr your ultimate goal is to get the new uh dawn gloves and blue is the equivalent of a bags and green is the equivalent of libras invasion dr and my stance on the gloves black star armors they all are the same so like for me personally i use the blue ones because they're dr so right now um shoes are not available for like the upgrade yet muskins are evasion ergons are dr let's see 11 billion or 12 billion and there's not on the market evasion 8 billion and you can buy them so i know that people may be tempted to buy one because it's like 4 billion cheaper but trust me when i say that it's not really as easy as it sounds because these stats actually do add up and so it's probably better to wait and save up a little bit more even though some of them might just be available to buy and you're just like for example here's what i think a new player's mentality would be like okay so muskin shoes 77 dp it's the biggest number on the screen that's what they look at but you have to really look at the evasion and damage reductions the small numbers under it and so like it's different and hard to compare whereas if you look at a pen Uragons, what i think most people will look at is big dp number 79 people think that's obviously better and so i think for most people especially if you're in the mid-tier phase uh, Uragons is just straight up better for most people so just keep that in mind what class you play depends on what you get and that's very late game conversions um what else do we talk about accessories all right so ominous rings are the accuracy versions congrats are the best in slot ap versions and the crescent rings are considered entry level ap and eye of the runes and crescents are the same thing except eye of the runes give hp on the side what you should have one pen crescent if you are a new player by doing the Jatina's quest that will save you 50 billion silver and you get one guaranteed without spending 50 billion silver so i'm going to assume you have one already and here's where things get tricky if you are in the mid like a mid-tier player transitioning into end game i would recommend either getting another crescent ring because that's probably going to be your next cheapest upgrade and if you are already like almost full pen and you're thinking okay so do i want eye of the ruins versus a tongrad ring so let me just look at this and compare it for you um 70 billion let's just take that number versus 100 billion do you think that 130 hp is worth one extra ap and in my opinion do i think 100 ap is worth 30 billion silver the answer is no but um it depends on where you are in the game because i actually unironically thought of getting uh non ap ones but extra ap be or hp because survivability is pretty nice not dying is pretty nice and so at the end of the day like when i got mine the prices were obviously a little bit different but just ask yourself do you think the hp versus ap is worth it and if not just go with double crescents and it'll be the less painful one because everything's expensive so ominous rings are the accuracy version and you trade off like three ap obviously for an extra 16 accuracy so remember when we were talking about the main hands before and how when i talked about uh, Penzarka being 200 accuracy versus an often being 182. So that's a difference of 18 accuracy. And the prices are 
roughly the same. And so that's basically the equivalent of trading off a, like, one of these accessory earrings for more AP. And so when you get accessory or accuracy accessories, just know these are very late game or you are strictly a PVPer. And for grinding, in 99% of places, accuracy is for the most part irrelevant for grinding and it is relevant for PVP. So just keep in mind, if you don't PVP at all, accuracy accessories, you probably don't need them. If you only like grinding circles, that's cool. Necklaces, all right, cool. Let's talk about this. Deborekas are obviously the best in slot APs over Ogre Rings. Um, this is your end game goal. It's very hard to get and it's expensive. Lunar necklaces are the accuracy version and Tungrads, Ogres, and Latins are all the same thing. The difference is Tungrad necklaces give you Black Spirit Rage on the side. And is it really worth the extra, I don't know, let's see, 70... Oh, cool, 80 billion versus... Holy, that's a lot. Okay, so 72. So you ask yourself, is 8 billion silver worth 20% Black Spirit Rage? 99% of the time, the answer is no. The reasoning why is Black Spirit Rage, um, obviously it caps at 100, and then you can get extras by uh, going the route of, like, you know, adding congrats on here. So, like, I get an extra 10% for each ring. And so the only time you would actually stack Black Spirit Rage is in large scale PvP when people are trying to drop fat 200s and go for montage clips on people. And usually it's very hard to get 200% without having to build every slot like that. So for the most part, I think realistically, Ogres or Latins are the right way to go. These two items are the exact same. They just look different and you get the one that is cheaper because these ex items are the exact same thing. Earrings, uh, Deborekas and Distos. This is actually a controversial topic because if you look at a pen, Debo, um, it's 19 AP. So yes, it's better than a Tet, but when you compare like a pen Disto to a pen Debo, if you have three Debereka accessories, it gives you a bonus of 12 AP. That is when it is significantly better than um, Distortions. But that's also at the ga game point where you have like a pen Debereka necklace, a belt, and you have at least one um, pen earring. So yes, it is better technically at that point, but 99 0.9% of us are not at that point. And so I think this will be viable eventually, but maybe not for another six months from now or maybe a year. I don't know when people actually start selling them. But for the rest of us, Distos are a good choice because they do give a lot of AP. Keep in mind that there's a trade-off so, like, right now, if you look at my stats, I'm actually 9 DP down. So, like, I could, if I was using something else, I could literally just get my gear score up, which doesn't actually mean anything, by the way. So, one thing that people have asked me is, when is a good time to start converting into distortion earrings? And the answer is, once you are basically full pen armor and, like, you have some capris into your armors, because just know that you are trading off like at least four DP per slot of earring. So if you are like barely breaking 330 or 340 DP, and then you equip two of these, suddenly you're at like 320 again, that makes grinding Elvia really difficult. So just be at the point where you think you're safe and like you can grind without too much worry and also, these are kind of expensive, so like if you're at 20 billion and this is your next cheapest option, chances are you're probably doing fine and then it's safe to upgrade. But for the most part, um, just keep that in mind. You're losing quite a bit of DP. Next, we have Dawn Earrings. This is actually the thing I was thinking about getting for my final pen piece. And 
it is the accuracy version so i do pvp and that's my upgrade but eh, it's optional uh distos and vaha's dawns are the exact same thing the difference is you can grind for these and these are from the ataraxian dungeons so same stats just different way of obtaining uh narc gearing you can choose one of these from the jatina and i don't think it's a bad option i just think that of the three choices from jatina um one of these is for more end game whereas the crescents will be universally better for a majority of people transitioning from mid game to end game so even if you chose the other one it's not a big deal you can always just change it at any given time it just costs like a bit of silver or something to convert them but like just know that if you feel like you chose the wrong option you can change it and just keep that in mind tongue red earrings used to be good back in the day now i would kind of not really recommend it to people because like they they are good in situations or like very specific things but i think for like if you are not min maxing and like you grind a lot to the point where you're probably going to start swapping into distos in like a month it's probably not worth losing the tax on this when you have to sell it back and you just keep grinding for a disto or something so that's just my opinion you can do whatever you want don't let me tell you what to do but if I was going to play this smart, I would either go for a Narc or a Disto. That's what I would do. Uh, Debereka belts, the best in slot ones. Turo belts are the accuracy. Tabex belt is the new thing that they came out with the Land in the Morning Light. So let's talk about this. I actually, um, I actually have one that I wanted to self-enhance, but then I just kind of got lazy. So here's the mechanic of the Tabex belt. Let me show you this real quick. So if you look at this little box under the item, right? So from pry, uh, like base to a pen, it, you use a special skill where like if you have it, it'll be like, uh, where is it? I don't even know where it is. It's like somewhere around here. If you have the belt on, I think, uh, I don't, I don't even know where it is, but if you have the belt equipped, a new skill will pop up and then it'll allow you to do that. So is it really worth it? The answer universally is no. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you're thinking about getting it, just know it's a meme. And I, if I were to actually try to think about this and be like, why did they create this belt? So let's look at it. Right now I have a pen Voltara that's 20 AP. If you get this belt, it's 17. So first and foremost, you're losing um, three AP, which is kind of a lot actually. But you get this ability at pen where you can use this thing for 60 seconds and it gives you a huge AP and DP burst window and accuracy. So is it worth the overall nine minute cooldown? So like when you use this ability, you cannot unequip the belt. So you're stuck with it. So like, yes, I know everyone has thought about it. It's just like, okay, so I want to pop this uh, buff and then swap back to my main belt. Unfortunately, it does not work that way. And uh, you cannot remove it while the cooldown is happening, which is the downside. If they took that out, I think this belt might actually be worth something. But... The only time I think this Tabex belt is worth it is, I guess maybe if you're trying to do a boss blitz or even then in the boss blitz is probably not that good because you have a one minute burst window and most bosses, if you're doing like C6 and higher are generally like uh, at least six minutes. So like you would have to pop it at the right time to do a hard burst and that's just a leaderboard push. Um, if you're doing any large scale PvP, uh, you get one opportunity to do a power play with that. And then if it fails, well, you just have 10 minutes left on your cooldown. So generally, I don't think it's good, but I, it might make for some cool montage clips, but I just don't think so. Uh, for the rest of us normies, we have these options. Basilisk Belt, which is the entry level 
Voltara, basically the same thing as a Bassy Belt, but gives more HP. And Tungrads, which is the one extra AP at pen level. I don't think Tungrad Belts are worth it at all because getting one AP on a Tungrad Belt for the price is like, okay, so like 75 billion, okay? And then over here is 50 billion. So is one AP worth 20 billion to you? Generally, I don't think so. So I say that, but I have also Tungrad rings, but I also bought them at a different price. So just keep that in mind. If it's worth it to you, if it puts you in a new bracket, it might be. But generally, I think I'd rather choose a survivability over um, one extra AP. That's just how it is in this game. If you know, you know. But yeah, uh, this video is going on really long, actually. And a few other things I want to talk about are alchemy stones. If you are a new player, don't be afraid to use these stones at all, mostly these three, because using one is better than not using one. They're disposable, you get 50 uses, and then you just buy a new one. When you're at the point where you're thinking of actually upgrading, I think getting a sharp, if you can, is a good idea, and then follow it up directly with a Bell's Heart or a Splendid. Uh, keep, I do know that Splendids are very difficult to get, and Bells are generally like the universal one that will put you up into a new bracket so i think for 99 percent of players getting a bell's heart all the way to end game is not a bad idea myself included and then you start upgrading it and for the one percent top players um well your goal is to get one of these and i want to get one too so i could go on a video of like talking about is a splendid versus a Vel's Heart worth it. And to me, I do think so, because the effects are actually a lot better. Keep in mind, you have to be in the 1% like top-geared players for this to matter. For everyone else, just a Vel's Heart and you'll be fine. And even like it does even if you have a splendid, it's just that very small push forward. It's not gonna save you from like <laughs> any I don't know, just like, it's a small push, you'll notice it, but it's not saving you from PvP. Um, everything else is, for the most part, personal preference, and if you have any other questions on anything specific, feel free to let me know, leave it in the comments, join the Discord and all that stuff. And before I head out, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's been almost 40 minutes, so I'll leave some timestamps in the description. So if you are looking at something in particular or you just want to watch something over again, you can do that. And so we have about two weeks left on our uh, affiliate code for a coin purchases and or the game. So if you are thinking about buying any a coins, which are pearls, basically, I use my code John Law. It's not case sensitive and I got a small portion of it. And if you're thinking about picking up the game in general, if you use my code while purchasing the game and or buying any packages or something or like upgrading, I also get a small portion of that as well. And I would really appreciate it. But with that said, thanks so much for watching. That's all I wanted to talk about today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Peace.